Welcome learners, I am Ritika Dabas, a teacher educator and today we'll discuss about reading aloud and silent reading. So, before understanding about reading aloud and silent reading, let us discuss on types of reading. To understand types of reading, that is reading aloud and silent reading, we will understand, we will try to know what actually reading is. Reading is an interactive and constructive process. The interaction between the readers and the text allows the readers to construct their meaning according to their acquired knowledge and experiences. How can one be a good reader? Now this is a good question that how can we make good readers? Learning to read does not require the memorization of letter names or phonic rules or a large vocabulary. This is in fact taken care of in the course of learning to read. Learners will not be able to make any sense of phonic rules without experiences of reading. Learners should not fully depend on doing exercises, drills and activities for developing skills of reading because these tasks, if not relevantly designed, distract and perhaps discourage learners from reading texts. But the sad situation is that in our classrooms we are doing this. The teachers are doing drills, they are doing exercises, activities, again and again repetition of the chapters to develop reading skills, which is not the right way. Sub-skills involved in reading. Reading involves recognizing vocabulary, Picking out keywords, deducing the meaning from familiar lexical items, understanding the background and foreground of the information, understanding the ability to determine the conceptual meaning of the text, the communicative value, function of sentences and utterances, recognition of literary devices used in the text, understanding cohesions between parts of the text through grammatical cohesion devices, ability to determine the writer's purpose, intent and point of view, analyzing text by gathering information available beyond the text, strategies for teaching reading. Though students face problem in reading, the good news is that 90% of reading difficulties can be overcome if students are trained in appropriate strategies or how to deal with reading text questions. There are two ways for, to follow while attempting reading text. These are skimming and scanning. Now we will discuss in detail what skimming is and what is scanning. Skimming is the fast reading procedure to get the general idea the gist of the text while scanning is reading the text in order to locate specific details. Skimming is done very quickly while scanning the finer details of the text are read by the children. Now we come to reading aloud and silent reading. Silent reading and reading aloud both are very effective reading strategies. Both of them complement each other and are helpful in developing reading skills among the learner. Reading aloud, silent reading. Reading aloud is reading with correct pronunciation, stress and rhythm. While silent reading is reading without making sounds and moving lips. Reading aloud gives scope for practice in speaking. In silent reading, there is no scope for practice in speaking. Reading aloud, the main focus is on comprehension. While in silent reading, Main focus is on comprehension and in reading aloud the main focus is not on comprehension. Let us discuss each of these in detail. Reading aloud to children and to have them read aloud both helps them to enhance their speaking skills. Now here we are talking of two different aspects. One is reading aloud to children and the second one is to have them read aloud. These are two different aspects. The first is done by a Peer can be done by a peer, by a parent or by a teacher and the second where the child is himself or herself reading aloud. Both these strategies help in enhancing the speaking skills. Reading aloud to children. Reading aloud to children provides a model of fluent reading. When the teacher reads aloud to children, 
the students have the exposure on how actually the reading is, how actually the reading is being done. And it gives them exposure to spoken English. Reading aloud to children introduces the language of books, which differs from language heard in daily conversation, on television and in movies. Children, they are familiar with the language of books, they are familiar with the language they see in television and in movies and reading aloud help them to understand what actually and how the words are being pronounced, how the words should be pronounced. Reading aloud lets children use their imagination to explore places, times and events beyond their own experiences. Reading aloud to children helps them to develop their thinking skills. While the teacher is reading, the students are listening. They actually go into the context of the theme. They go actually into the chapter, into the story and this helps them to develop their thinking skills. Reading aloud by children. When children read aloud, it helps them to build speaking skills including pronunciation. Reading aloud by children helps them to grow their vocabulary. They read aloud, they are able to know how the words are being pronounced and the new words which are being used, they are aware of the new words also. Reading aloud by children helps them to make sense of what they see, hear and read. Now, it is very important to know how to practice read aloud. Reading aloud is fun. When a teacher reads aloud, she is a model for enjoyment and reading. To practice read aloud, first choose a short story or poem which children may enjoy. Because if we choose a story or a poem which is not of the interest of the child, the child may not be interested in that, he might lose his interest. But if, it's, if it is something which is interesting for the child, the, the children will really enjoy it. Read aloud the story or poem to children. While reading aloud, the teacher should vary the tone of voice or expression to fit the plot. The teacher should use a different voice for each character as it is very interesting and very effective. Teacher should pause when appropriate to create suspense. The child enjoys the suspense uh, in the reading aspect. Read for as long as children can pay attention. Because if a teacher reads for a longer duration, the child will not be able to pay attention. Invite a child to read aloud the story or poem to the class. Uh, once the teacher has modeled the reading, now the teacher should in invite the children to come in front and read aloud the poem or the story to the class. When the student reads, the teacher may notice that the student has memorized or some or all of the text, but this is fine. Let the child read the way the teacher reads with expression and enthusiasm. The teacher should invite active participation during and after the reading. The focus should be on pleasure and enjoyment of reading. After the reading, some interesting activities like drawing, puzzles, dramatization, etc. based on reading can be conducted. Reading aloud is fun. Now, let us discuss silent reading in detail. Students should be given opportunities for reading silently in class as they will be doing this activity in real life. We as elders also are doing the same thing. We are the, the opportunities for reading aloud are very less in our lives. But what we actually do is we are reading silently always. Reading silently improves students' understanding because the focus is completely on comprehension. The focus is on how to understand the context, how to understand the topic, the story or the poem. So, it helps their students' understanding. It helps them to concentrate on what they are reading. It helps to self-pace reading. When we read silently, we form mental pictures of the topic being discussed. We do not need to read one word at a time. Reading is being done holistically and not in compartments. Silent reading helps them in developing strategies they need for reading fast and with better comprehension. Silent reading 
helps them to develop the skill of reading for purpose. Strategies to encourage silent reading. There are certain strategies which we can develop in the students for silent reading. First is reading cards. Reading cards are small booklets or cards with short text or stories that are graded according to difficulty. Means a simpler reading cards can be made for younger children and according to the grade of the child, the level of the reading cards can be enhanced. Initially, the teacher should make very simple reading cards for younger children. The teacher may choose a very short story or poem or a set of facts for a subject. Now, how to make reading cards? Reading cards can be made uh, with cardboards, cut out cards large enough for a student to hold and read easily. The size of the card should be which is easily read by the child. If a teacher is standing in front of the class, the child should be able to see it from a distance also. All the children in the class should be able to read it properly. So the size should be appropriate. Now. The teacher should decide on a shorter text. The text which is written on the card should be short. Write the text on one side of the card. And on that side, pictures can be drawn which can help the child to comprehend better. The teacher should write simple questions about the text on other side of the card. And then now the question is how will we use these reading cards? These reading cards can be used very effectively in a classroom which the teacher has made groups. A classroom can be divided into groups of six. The teacher distributes the cards in groups and the teacher asks them to read the card individually. Then they will answer the questions in their notebooks. Teacher takes rounds in class and observes each child. Teacher may ask the children to exchange the cards. She can now See how many cards each child has read. The second strategy is making a reading corner in the class. If the child develops the habit of reading, it is very effective in developing his or her reading skills. Teacher can make a collection of storybooks. These books can be from the library. These books can be gifted by someone, can be brought by students and can be written by students also. She can encourage children to read stories whenever they are free. Reading interesting news from the newspaper and magazine. Teacher may bring cuttings of interesting news and distribute these to children. These could be on environment, adventure, animals, current issues, etc. or any other theme which is liked by children. They will read these and teacher may discuss them in class after the silent reading session. So, we have learned that reading aloud and silent reading can make efficient readers. We have also shared how can these strategies be adopted in our classrooms. Thank you.